Hi, welcome to the H4RL Career Podcast. I'm Jill. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to talk about the best way to get into any career. But before we do that, it's really important that you know what career is best for you. So if you need some help with that, make sure you visit our website at h4rl.com. We have a ton of resources and a whole course, mm -hmm. if that's what you'd like. We'll walk you step by step through it. You can be in contact with us if you have any questions. It's a really great way to figure out a good career. Also, if you like what you see here, if you find this valuable, be sure to subscribe, give us five stars, a like, all that stuff. It really helps us out. Absolutely. So, so today we're going to talk about the best way to get into any career that you want to get into. So really, the best way is to get an internship. All right, so an internship or a co-op, they kind of call them the same thing. They're a little bit different, but pretty much the same type of thing. Uh, it's basically where you go to work for a company before you actually get a degree, usually in the field of interest that you're, you're trying to get your degree in. Now, some real work experience. Real work experience. Now, there are like basically two major types of internships. There's the paid, which is, what is the best one overall. We'll talk about why that is exactly besides the money side of things. <laughs> kind of obvious in some ways. And the unpaid, which is obviously not as good because you don't get as much pay. You don't get this, you know, you don't get the money. But there's also a little bit more deeper um, statistics behind that. So unpaid, about 43% of internships are unpaid. So basically you're going to go and work for a company and you're actually going to basically get some basically networking experience, like understand like, Who's in that field? You're going to go and actually see what real people do. So that's the great thing about even unpaid internships. You actually get a chance to see what that career field really is like on a day-to-day -day basis. Not really right. That really is invaluable. So it seems like, why would I ever do an unpaid internship? Because it really is such a great opportunity for you to get to know what that job is really like, see if you really want to do it, and also learn about all the different types of careers that are in that one job field. Because people will be doing different things, and some of them may be more suited to you. Trust me, there's nothing like actually getting in there and actually seeing what the job is like before you actually go through all the expense of possibly getting a college degree, right. and then go in there and find out, well, I really don't like this work environment. We both did that, mm -hmm. by the way. We both worked at jobs before getting degrees that we thought, hey, I might want to do this. And we did it, and then we thought, Maybe I don't not. think I do, actually. <laughs> right. So there's nothing like that. Plus, even with unpaid internships, you can actually do with different companies because different companies operate different ways. So you actually can maybe sure. see, hey, I like this career field, but maybe I don't really like that company, or maybe you get to go to different cities. So that's the, the, the basic benefit of an internship besides if you get paid or unpaid. Now, unpaid internships, by the way, you're actually less likely to get a job offer after college. That's because, well, usually unpaid internships are in career areas where, honestly, they don't, it's either really competitive, so they don't have to pay you to, to work there, or two, it's usually in an area where maybe they don't have as big as a budget. Whereas the paid internships are usually in that career fields where they have bigger budgets and you might actually be doing more real work, by the way, in the paid internship. Because there's some legal issues, we're not going to get into that, about what you are and are not allowed to do with an unpaid internship. But un with paid interns, you actually are working and they're going to give you lots of tasking and you're basically going to have to do that and perform. And sometimes those tasks seem you know, you might feel like it's sort of below you. But an important thing to remember is that these tasks have to be done. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't doing them as an intern, someone who's above you would be doing them because sometimes things just got to get done. 100%. Like I was an intern and I would never turn down any work. And I've actually now in my position, we have interns that work for me as well as other engineers. And I'll task it. I've tasked some interns who felt like the work that I was asking them to do were below them. Granted, this is a work that I, as a more senior engineer, would have to do regardless, <laughs> all right? The work has to get Somebody's done. Somebody's got to do it. And they, honestly, you're lower in the total pool. You are usually, you're getting paid less. You're cheaper than, obviously, an inter engineer would be. So, yeah, that does not look good for you. If you do get an internship, your attitude is everything. So, we consider internships, by the way, like a three-month interview, by the way. So, many of the paid internships... Many companies use that as a way to bring in new hires eventually into their company. They, it's kind of like they... They do initial searching because it's low risk for them to bring in an intern because it's easy for them to get rid of them or, or you know, they're lower cost, so it's not a big risk for them. And you get to see what their work ethic is like, what their attitude is like, if people like working with you. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind 
from the very first moment, that first mm -hmm. interview, phone call, email that you send, be professional, represent yourself in a way that you are someone they'd want to hire. Now, some of the fields that basically have unpaid internship are like, the fashion industry, the uh, publishing, so writing and stuff like that, media, journalism, uh, production, that's basically Hollywood, you know, all of the TV, theater, they don't pay their interns as well. Either as well, uh, state and local governments. The federal government does, uh, but state and local governments do not as much anymore because they can get them to come in and work for them. As well as uh, the nonprofits. So for-profit companies that we have paid internship as well. So if you're interested in those areas, you're probably going to do unpaid. But you're like, but you might be saying, but Dave, I can't afford, I mean, I, I can't afford to go an entire yeah, summer to go unpaid. You know, I have to make money. So here's a, a statistics that will either be good or bad, depending on how you want to look at it. All right. So there's a stat out there that shows that people who do unpaid internships basically have the same hiring rate and the same uh, job opportunities as people who do don't do an internship at all. So that's good if you can't afford to go unpaid and you have to work to pay for college and stuff, which I did, so I understand that. Um, but it's also not as good if you are going, you know, you might be wondering, well, if I do an unpaid internship, I'm not going to get any better job offers than if I didn't do one. But you do get that work experience. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for you to at least get an idea of what it's like to work in that environment. It really is valuable. So if you, even if you have to do an unpaid internship and maybe you're not full time, Maybe you can do it just a couple days a week, or at the very least, you're getting some shadowing experience. Mm -hmm. But one thing you can consider, if you really want to do that unpaid internship, you see the value in it, but you need to make money, I mean, you could always do your internship during the day and then work another job in the evening. It's not going to be the most relaxing summer, but it could end up being a good idea for you. Or another option is if you could live at home while you're doing this, so you wouldn't have to pay rent and maybe mom and dad can help you with your groceries and stuff like that and give you the chance to get your foot in the door in that industry. That's another way you could possibly try to swing it. So unpaid are a little harder, but I still think it's worth the uh, experience. And honestly, there's some movement here to make all internships paid through like the, the government's talking about that, but I don't know if that actually will get pushed through or not. So let's talk about paid internships now. So Paid internships, you have a, a much better chance of getting a job offer because guess what? You make contacts, they know you, they like you, and so you're much more likely to get a job offer once you graduate. And you've proven that you're a hard worker and capable. Yeah. So some industries that are paid the most as far as your paid internships are engineering, tech, and finance. So all those areas, you know, think about money. That's where the money's at for the most part. Those are getting paid. I had a paid internship when I was in college, and it paid much, much better than my other jobs I had before then. That were more of your traditional college types of jobs. Definitely more than work study. So if you can work there in the summer times or even during your breaks, like maybe a co-op is actually where you kind of rotate a little bit. We work maybe the summer and then the winter and then the summer and the winter. And in some engineering uh, schools, they actually require you to, to do this type of things because you know it's actually really good to get that work experience. It's kind of part of your schooling. So you actually have to have a what they call a co-op, but. Same thing as an intern, you're basically working for a company. But anyway, a lot of them, you get your foot in the door, you usually get paid much better, especially in these, like the finance and the engineering than you would in other types of jobs. And if it's close to where you go to school, like mine was, it's actually really great because I actually worked a part-time through school. So it gave me extra money, spending money to, you know, pay for rent and pay for food and pay for our books and stuff, making pretty good money. Go on dates. Go on dates when, I had, when we needed to. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's really nice. I mean, you're, I guys make up to seventeen dollars an hour back back then. It was, it was a while ago. I know we pay much better now. So think about that. You can make pretty good money as an intern, especially in those type of fields. So let's talk about that. So okay, I, I'm convinced. I will do the internship. Well, how do you get my foot in the door? Well, the way you do this, a lot of a lot of colleges, a lot of times internships come with college. You know, you're going to be getting a degree in some sort, and you're going to go get some work experience. Will hold career fairs. Mm -hmm. now, career fairs are basically with high button. They bring in lots of different companies to like a general area on campus, and you dress up and you go with your resume, and you basically go from booth to booth to booth, and that you're interested in these companies, and you hand them your resume. And you usually talk to like an HR representative there, and see if maybe you can get an internship, or if you're getting ready to graduate, a job. All right. So that's one way you can start to find about other companies and make contacts. It's usually through your campus. But don't uh, discourage applying directly online. 
that's actually how I got my internship. I went to career fairs. I actually got interviews and talked to people. I had some offers, but the company I eventually went with was actually real close to my where I went to school, and I actually just applied directly online. And I got asked for an interview, and I made the interview process, and actually, I still work that same company. So it led to a, obviously a job offer after school. So that was great. So I just directly applied online and still got in through the door. Sometimes it's gonna be discouraging because it's hard to make it through that first hurdle, but I would, I would say go ahead and just try it. You know, it doesn't you hurt. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen. Make sure you have a good resume. So when you're looking, when we're looking at job applicants, because I'm part of the hiring process now because I'm on the other side of things, the first thing is GPA. That's one of the first screening things. You're just gonna look through like, you know, we're not gonna accept people with below a certain GPA, all right? So first thing is you gotta make good grades. So your GPA really doesn't matter. We usually don't like to hire people unless it's a sophomore or junior year because we want to have a little bit more experience so we can actually give you more stuff to do and be a little more reliable because you actually know a little bit more about your field. So if you're a freshman, it might be a little harder to get your foot in the door because quite honestly, you just don't have that much experience. So, but we'll be usually, at least for a sophomore or junior uh, to come in. We then also look at like, what kind of classes have you taken already? Again, we're looking at, can we use you or know to do some work? And then we also look at what kind of clubs and activities have you been in, right? What kind of experience do you actually have? And then you say, well, I'm trying to do this to get experience, Dave. That doesn't make any sense. Well, you can be part of a club on campus. Some uh, clubs, is like, they actually have, like, student organizations for engineering where they actually design to build, like, a car to race or airplane to fly and stuff like that. We like students like that because it's not just book work. They actually have hands-on experience of actually doing some engineering. If you don't do that, I mean, try to get some experience with this, like, I'm talking about engineering here, like working around the house, working on your car, uh, this robotics club if you're in high school or something like that. Just get some kind of experience of actually doing something hands-on. And I'd say the same type of thing would apply for people who maybe not are not in the engineering fields to do that type of work. If you want to be a writer and get your foot in the door that way, they have newspaper clubs. You know that club. They have like student newspapers in most schools. Get involved with that so you can get some experience actually writing articles so you actually have something to show an employer like, look, I can write and here's some examples. If nothing else, start your own blog and get that out there. Um, write for your church, write for a community newsletter or something. You know, just get some experience writing so that when you're coming in, you can point to something like, look, I have experience doing it. Here you go. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's some good ideas if you want to just try to get your foot in the door and try to show you have something. It shows a little initiative as well. Right, and that's the kind of thinking as well that you need if you are interested in a career field that doesn't really do internships, or if you're too young. So like Dave said, internships are often gonna start coming in sophomore, junior year of college, but at that point, you've already made some decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get related experiences before that. Even in middle school, you can start looking around, kind of trying some things. And so these might not be long-term things. Um, they might just be more interests, experiences, things like that, job shadowing, but never hold back from an experience and always be looking for them proactively. Like Dave said, take initiative. That's huge in helping you advance to where you want to be and just representing yourself well. So like I was in, I decided to go into education after I did that internship in the other field, a nice paid internship and went, eh. It was business and she decided she didn't really want to do business. It was, and, and it, was, it was a great experience, but I decided it wasn't for me every day. Um, I wanted something different. And so I switched to education, but there aren't so much internships in education. You might find the same thing if you are wanting to go into like an animal mm -hmm. type field or healthcare. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to find internships so much. You kind of have to be trained before you do that job. So instead, you're going to be looking for what experiences can I get. So I went and I worked as a YMCA summer day camp counselor. I also um, did some private tutoring. So I got some teaching experience, mm -hmm. experience working with kids, managing a group of children. Mm -hmm. It was all very valuable. And then it was related to what I was doing later. Um, you can also look into, you know, in healthcare, there are some kind of lower tier jobs yeah. you could get in and at least be in the environment around the people. So you're starting to have an idea of what would it be like to work there. If you're going to do animals, I, I worked at an animal hospital, but I worked in the kennel. And basically, it's not an internship, but you're paid. But you absolutely get an idea of what it's like to be a veterinarian or a vet tech day in and day out, what it's like. And you get to be around animals. You can see this is something I really like. I love animals, but doing that for three years made me realize 
this career fair really isn't what I wanted it to be. So I absolutely would recommend doing something like that, like a lower level job inside an area. Or if you want to work at the zoo. I know the zoo in our city, you basically have to work like in the concessions. It's like a, it's a union thing. So you have to start at the very bottom and work your way up, which is still a way to get your foot in the door and get to meet people in that field, you know, possibly get letters of recommendation later on if that's the area you want to try to go into and see if that's something you really like to do. Just being in that environment, you see more what goes on day to day. 100%. So these are some areas and there are some areas that don't really offer internships and these are some ways to get in the door or at least get some experience to see if it's really a good fit for you. So Because remember, you're doing a couple of different things here. You're building your resume, but at the same time, you're really giving yourself that advantage of seeing what the field is like so you can make a good choice. I do also want to say another thing. If you are getting a paid internship, especially at bigger companies like we do, we like to hire students from all around the country because we want diversity in our workplace from like people with different type of educational backgrounds. Bigger companies will absolutely pay to relocate you for the summer. Like we will pay relocation fees for students to move to our, our city where we, we are at and give them like a stipend to help with their cost of their living, as well as pay them. I was so, actually really surprised to hear that. Yeah. I know they do that for jobs, but I didn't know they do it for internships. Yeah, so it's a way for you to get into some, live in different cities while you're in college. You have to go for like maybe where you want, might want to live and to get experience in different types of uh, companies because they really do have different cultures in different companies. So it's good for you. The idea like manufacturing, if you're engineering, manufacturing versus research and development versus just making commercial products. I mean... They have very different fields, so you might want to, you know, get, you know, move around a little bit while you're in college and see what you like and what you want to do. So it's another great, another great reason why internships are probably worth the investment, even if you don't necessarily get paid the most money. So. And I would say companies would understand that. Mm -hmm. Like if you have oh, an internship and you're great, and they say we want you back next summer, wouldn't it be okay to say I really appreciate that? I enjoyed my time here but I feel like I need to get some other experiences before I really commit to work. Oh, we do, absolutely. We have interns who move on because they want to try different companies, or maybe they even stack them, honestly, because some sometimes you're in very high demand. Like, they know, we already know, like, that summer we're going to have them, but that winter, we want them to come back. They're not going to be there because they're going to another company. They, they communicate that up front, and we're, we're good. But we have other interns who, like, love it, and they don't want to leave the company, so they we usually keep them on, and then eventually we offer them a job at the end if it's a good fit. So, internships are a great way to do all this. So, that's basically our recommendation outside of just figuring out what you want to do. First off, you got to figure out kind of generally what you want to do, all right? And then you want to go and just do internships. You just don't want to just jump right into the water. One last note about all this. The very, once you figure out what you want to do, even before you get an internship, it might be good to shadow somebody. Mm -hmm. If you can get make a contact and just call them up and talk to them for sure. 10 or 15 minutes at first, that's like a small little interview. And then a lot of times they might actually let you come in and shadow them for half a day or a whole day. So that is another really good example, especially if it's in an area that doesn't offer internships, like a veterinarian. You, know, you can still shadow veterinarians for a day or maybe a doctor for a day or something like that. They'll let you come in and kind of do the rounds with them sometimes. So just get in the work environment. Do I like the field where, I, where I'm working at? Do I like kind of the type of things you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I don't care what you watch on YouTube for the most part. Besides this, we're, we're obviously awesome, but <laughs> but even those little short video clips you watch on, on uh, YouTube doesn't give you a real, it's not like really being there. Mm -hmm. Really seeing what's like every part of that day of like where they eat lunch at, what's, what's their lunch times like, like how busy, how hectic are they, right? How much time do they actually have downtime? How much people are they talking to other people, right? How much, or is there more isolation? I mean, there's a lot of valuable experience of actually going in there and seeing what the workplace is really like. So I'd really highly encourage that. And if you're still trying to figure all this stuff out, there's lots of steps to it. Come visit us at h4rl.com. We have a career course for you to check out. Also, when you join, uh, you get to talk to us. You can send us emails, IMs, in the forums, ask questions, and we'll be there to help you every step of the way. So check that out as well. It's for a very reasonable price. It's less than even the cost of taking your family to a restaurant. Trust me, we just went to like a, I'm not talking about like a cheap restaurant. I'm talking about Chipotle. Cheaper than taking your family to Chipotle. So check it out. Uh, it's about the lowest cost thing you're going to find out there right now. There's even a free trial to start with. It's even a free, free trial. So check that out as well. If you like this at all, give us a thumbs up, five star rating. Tell other people about it. Even if you downloaded this, please go back on and get, you know, give us a good rating because it does help us. All right. Until next time, I'm Dave. 
Until thanks. Bye.